Nikki, um, her dad uh, is Dalton Trumbo, who's a very uh, famous writer, but, um, and he was blacklisted because he was a communist. Um, and Nikki, she is a lot like her father, actually. So I think because they're so much alike, they're such strong personalities, they butt heads all the time, um, especially because she kind of, she'll stand up to him when other people or probably too afraid to, uh, and and she kind of she calls him out um, on on you know things that he does wrong. You know he he can be very hypocritical at times. Yeah, she she's very bold <laughs> for sure. She has her own um, things that you know she gets involved in a lot of protests um, against uh, segregation and as she gets older because in the movie <laughs> I play from 13 to 30 so it's like <laughs> pretty crazy right now this is my 13 year old look it's funny because I didn't know Dalton Trumbo um, I mean I had watched Roman Holiday and like some of his movies but I didn't know that his story, um, and I wasn't even aware of the blacklist. <laughs> I know that, I mean, my, my, my parents were, but I just never knew about it. So when the script came, I was like, it was like discovering a whole new thing. I was like, oh my God, this actually happened. Like, I couldn't believe it. You know, it was like a history lesson <laughs> or something. So for me, I, I just, I read the script really fast. It was just so interesting uh, to learn something new. And, and also, I think it's cool to have a movie about Hollywood. You know, I, that's not something that people do very, very often, you know, a movie about movies. It's just, you know, not always done. So uh, it was unique and I was excited about that. And I also, I loved Nikki and, and she's still alive. So I, um, I've emailed her, we've emailed back and forth and uh, it's really cool to, a lot of pressure though, <laughs> you know, to like play a person. Uh, it's like, oh gosh, you want to get it right. but. Um, yeah, I talked to John, you know, the writer, and because he knows Nikki and and Mitzi, the two daughters, very well, so he talked to them a lot. She is a victim to the blacklist in a way because her she once that happened, the whole Trumbo family, they had to really change their entire life, you know, and, and live in hiding and in secret. And if people asked her, you know, what does your dad do? You know, what's his job? You know, she, she would be stuck. You know, what do I say? And I can't, she couldn't trust a lot of people. And it's a lot of pressure, like, especially growing up, there's already so much pressure just to be a teenager and, you know, be in school, but then you're adding, this whole thing on top of it. So it definitely changed um, their lives. So, but she came out a fighter, I feel. Like she wouldn't, even though she was a victim, I don't think she would want to be um, kind of portrayed as a victim. She, you know, she wants to be like, well, I can, I can still go on with my life. And, uh, and, and that's something that she talks to her dad about. She's like, you need to just overcome this, you know, stop living in hiding, there's nothing else that these people can do to us. You know, they, they've tried to do everything, but uh, we're not gonna back down. And so I think she's like, why would, don't give in. And uh, she's, very, she's very strong in that way. She's, so when she kind of convinces him to go get the Oscar, it's his, he earned it, you know? And uh, so, yeah, why not? <laughs> Brian Cranston, um, yeah, and Diane Lane. It's like it's pretty huge. Like, cause I knew that they were gonna do it before I was involved in it. Um, I knew that that was like one of the big things. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'd get to work with them. They get to be my mom and dad. That's the coolest thing ever. Um, and yeah, they're amazing. Brian is so funny, and on like on set, he just makes everyone feel very, very comfortable and um, just nice to everyone. So I learned to a lot from him with that. And yeah, Diane, she always brings her little dog everywhere. Milo, he's always sitting with her in the makeup chair and hair, um, yeah, hair trailer and stuff. So uh, yeah, they're, I've, I've learned a lot and I'm gonna miss them. <laughs> I only have a couple more days. So it's gonna be sad when I, when I have to leave. But yeah, we've gotten close, even though I'm a small part in the film, but, but still, I feel like we're all a unit and we've 
become a family, you know? We kind of, in the movie, they had to become a really close family, and I think for us, even during filming, we became that. I love Jay. I mean, I met with him, uh, and we just talked for the, after I read the script for the very first time, and we met with each other at a hotel, like, restaurant, and talked about Nikki and the characters, and after I met him, I just I wanted to do it so much. He's so passionate about it, you can just tell, um, and so particular with each little detail, which I think that details in films, that's what makes it special, you know, looking at all the little things, and um, and he's very open to any questions that you have or any ideas ever. There's one scene where it's my uh, sweet 16, my birthday, um, and I was like, I, I think that uh, we, we need to have party hats, you know? And he was like, yes, we have to have the party hats. He made sure that we had, you know, it's just, it, he makes you feel comfortable and really talks over things and wants to, you to, to feel like it's the most natural for you, you know, uh, and, and talks to each person, you know, what do you want to be doing in the scene? You know, it gets into the spe specifics of stuff, which is very helpful. He's like the nicest guy you'll ever meet. Well, we did this scene the other day where uh, Brian, he's in, he's in his bathtub, because Dalton Trump, he works in his bathtub a lot, and um, it's also kind of going back, it's, it was my birthday, Nikki's birthday, and um, and Trumbo doesn't want to come down to, because he's, he's too busy working, so he doesn't come down to eat <laughs> Nikki's birthday cake, and that makes me very upset, so um, yeah, it's a sad birthday for me, but when I, I was off camera, we'd already done my sh portion, but then Brian's in the bathtub, he's like this cranky old man, you know, like, um, and they're screaming at me, I have like my birthday hat on, it's so sad, but we kept laughing, because it just is, it's so outrageous just thinking about, you know, he's in the bathtub screaming at me, he's very, very funny, and yeah, he's hilarious, so, um, that was one that I remember, that image is very, you know, iconic. There's also a picture of Dalton Trumbo in the bathtub working where he looks very grumpy. <laughs> I think it's hard for her. It's hard on the entire family living with this. And also he has a lot of, he's working all the time and he is so committed to that and that's all he's thinking about. You know, he's not, he's kind of blocking everything else out because he's so stressed. So because of the stress, I think that that puts that on to Nikki and, uh, and she gets very frustrated with him a lot um, and I, I think even from a young age he always kind of expressed his opinion so she was a very mature eight-year-old you know even she had you know strong views even then you know she never was and she's very serious as well she wasn't really oh you know like just uh, she wasn't immature, that's for sure. So uh, definitely growing up with him, there's kind of no way of that. You know? and, uh, and he definitely set down some, like, some rules. You know, everyone, at any time, you're going to go deliver the script. But you, know, you can't go hang out with your friends because you have, to, you have to type these pages for me. And so all of everything else got like, put on the back burner, which, um, which that's hard because it's like you want to be able to go out with your friends and do the things that, you know, that you want. So um, I think for her, she had to grow up pretty fast because she was kind of thrown into a very adult lifestyle of being very stressed out and worried all the time. Um, and but she's she's very strong, so she would she would call him out on it and be you know. But and and he finally kind of he does listen to her, and uh, it's very touching at the end when they kind of they make up and become close. She always talked about how she loved Cleo. She can't remember of any times that they really got an argument. She was a very supportive mom, so that was one thing. And she also said that she called um, her mom and her dad by Cleo and Trumbo a lot. She didn't say, uh, she didn't call them mom or dad, which she tried to kind of incorporate that in, into the movie. But um, it's kind of hard to make that work because some people think that that's, oh, you know, that's not, that means that the child doesn't like 
the parents, you know, it's kind of like a distancing thing, but um, Nikki was like very quick to say that that was like kind of a term of endearment, you know, look, because they looked at each other as equals. We, you know, we are, we're equals. So um, it wasn't like kind of a hierarchy of mom and, and dad. So that, that was interesting to me, um, just kind of explained how their family saw each other.